So you want to run. Run. How's it going guys? This is Jerry Dean and this is my channel where I talk about the keto lifestyle, running, fitness, and just give you points to be a better version of yourself. So actually last weekend I completed my first half marathon and man, it was amazing. It was one of the best feelings ever. Uh, it was very nice. I actually did it with this thing called the, the Bayou City Half Series. Uh, it's actually the first one of the series, but it was one in Cyprus. I'm actually wearing the shirt right now. Um, this is what you get when you finish it, actually. I made this video just to kind of give some pointers to people who actually want to start running. Um, and I want to tell you a lot of things that, you know, I wish I kind of knew before I started. I think it'll help, uh, you know, a lot of people out. Uh, number one, you know, the first tip I would give you is to get um, get some good shoes. You know, that's a little bit difficult, you know, because there's a lot of things out there in the market. Um, I started running with some just regular Nikes that I kind of had to work out. I kind of use them for everything. And I learned really fast that it's not such a good idea to do that, especially because you get a lot of blisters um, and you get all kinds of other stuff like injuries uh, in your knees and stuff. But then we're using the wrong pair. I would say go to a running store and just talk to an associate there, kind of a little bit about what you've done before in the past. And a lot of them are pretty trained and, you know, to kind of help you uh, what you can choose. Um, for instance, I found out that I had a bit of a wide foot. So they recommended I use, you know, a little something a little bit wider. Um, so one thing that I, I, I they told me too that, you know, I just started doing now is I actually use one size up when I run. Um, so normally I wear about an eight and a half or so. So with, with running shoes, I do a nine and a half or even a 10. Um, the ones I have now are some Brooks that I would just bought. Uh, they're a nine and a half and they're amazing. I mean, if I can feel the difference. Like I said, I started with some Nikes and that's kind of was my go-to shoe in general. They, they didn't, they, I mean, they really hurt. They were really tight because they were my actual size, eight and a half. And I didn't notice how tight they were. I noticed that my, my foot actually couldn't expand. But yeah, I didn't know. And again, trial and error. But my second advice is that is what you have to kind of look for when you run. Uh, always, you know, kind of mind your pace. Um, you know, you kind of look around and see what a good pace is for you. And I would say that, you know, um, having something that to track it, you know, like a Fitbit or Apple watch or something like that, or there's, there's so many out there in the market. I use a Fitbit. Uh, it actually, I actually have a link to Strava, which is a, a running app. And it actually gives me all my time, my pace. It tells me kind of a lot of the stuff that, you know, I want to like the heart rate and stuff like that. But my concern is the pace. And also, you know, the length of time, you know, for instance, I go out sometimes and I say, well, I only have two hours to run. Let me try to run this much. By the way, my the, the first half marathon that I just did, uh, I did it at, a, I think it was a 10 minutes per mile pace, which is not that great. But again, it was my first half. I did it in a total of about two hours and 17 minutes. Uh, so that wasn't too bad. I was, I was a bit proud of myself because actually my goal was less than three hours. Number two is, you know, find, you know, some type of, you know, armband or something to kind of keep your, your pace and kind of track what you're doing all the time. My third thing would be, my third advice would be to actually find a time that you want to run. Um, again, experiment with that. A lot of people say, well, I love to run at night. And some people say, I love to run in the morning. I tried both actually. And I found out that I I really don't, I mean, I like the nighttime a lot. Uh, you kind of kind of just feel like you're out there running. Everyone's asleep. Uh, I try to wake up sometimes in the morning and waking up already is kind of hard for me. Now just, and then also just to go out there and run, it's, it's a little bit hard to do that. But I learned that running at night is better for me. I still do run in the morning every now and then when I, it just depends on my schedule. But again, just kind of find out what works for you at a certain time that you want to run. My fourth advice would be to actually go out there and also find out what kind, how do you like to run? Do you like to run on pavement? Do you like to run on a park? Do you like to run a treadmill? I actually do both. Um, I noticed that. I started running on a treadmill. Well, actually, when I started, I couldn't run. I was actually walking. I could barely walk a quarter mile uh, when I was about 300 plus pounds. The doctor didn't recommend it because, you know, my knees would kind of give up. Um, I started doing a treadmill and I would probably do about a quarter mile. And then I would just, you know, pretty much, you know, just get, you know, completely winded and, I, and my knees would, would hurt so bad. I started on a treadmill. I actually really liked it. Um, I have a okay treadmill that I bought, you know, just a regular treadmill and nothing fancy. Um, I started going out there running just because I kind of wanted to kind of get that feel of being outside, especially when I did my first 5K. Uh, running outside was a big difference for me and how the pavement feels on your on your feet is completely different. Um, with the treadmill, what's good about it is it's consistent because you're kind of running at a certain pace. But the problem is that you kind of, if you, you can cheat a little bit by resting a little bit on it, which you can't do in real life when you're out there running because, you know, you'll fall. But um, there's, there's pros and cons to both. So kind of find out what you like. 
and find out what works for you and also what fits your schedule. Obviously, if you're trying to run really late, you don't want to go out there, you know, outside and kind of be out there running. It's a little bit dangerous. So the treadmill sometimes is something that I like to do. I live in Houston where it gets really hot. I run on a treadmill in my garage, which is still pretty hot, but it's not as hot as, you know, the blazing sun on you. Um, it doesn't get really cold, but it does get sometimes chilly where I just run around my garage and it feels a little bit warmer than outside. But most of the time, like I said, I run outside. Uh, I kind of just kind of give and take on both of them. I find pros and cons to both, so I don't really have a preference, but that's just me. Find out what works for you. Advice number five would be um, find out, you know, also your diet. Um, like I said, I started on the keto, if you've seen some of my other videos. And the keto, it's kind of hard because you, you do need carbs when you run. I noticed that when I do a run, I'll like drop weight really fast. Uh, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's, I mean, I'm not an expert in none of this stuff, but I just kind of notice what my body does. So what I tend to do now is I actually eat a banana and usually a protein bar uh, before I do a, a long run. And then when I come back, I do a shake. I just do some protein uh, powder or uh, muscle milk. And then I'll do some a uh, handful of berries. Uh, I do a little bit of peanut butter and some ice. And I put an egg in there, just a little more protein. This actually came from a recommendation from a, uh, my doctor who told me to do that. Uh, just He's actually a runner himself. So that was good advice. Um, well, I, I started noticing that I get more energy. I didn't lose that much weight as fast. And, you know, it kind of just kind of helped me kind of just keep a, a little bit of my muscle that I that I kind of had, which is a little bit, but, you know, still some muscle. Advice number six, I would say get some cool tunes. Uh, the first time I did a 5K, I remember I go out there and... I started running and I have, you know, just the regular headphones, you know, the wired ones. They get all tangled up. Um, I'm wearing, uh, uh, you know, I remember it started raining. I'm wearing a, a hoodie actually gets in my face. If there's rain, I have a towel that I, that I have just with me, just kind of hanging on me. I try to use it. It falls. It falls in a puddle of mud. It was just a complete disaster. And it'll make you start wanting, you know, hate running fast because... It is already a toll on your body. You don't already want to do it. So now it just kind of more suck. It, it, it really sucked. But as I got, you know, I started, you know, kind of buying some cool stuff. I bought some, you know, headphones that are the, the, I have the Jabra. The Active Elite is what I use. Uh, they're Bluetooth. Uh, they sync to my phone. I bought a little uh, pouch like you see here. Uh, this one right here. So that, that's where I kind of put my phone and, and all my stuff, which that's really cool. Instead of kind of, I actually carried a, a bag with me. That was horrible. Uh, I use this now as a sweatband. So just, you know, some little arm, you know, I don't know what these are called. I think armbands maybe. So I use armbands kind of you know, for my sweat. I used to carry another one like in the winter for like, you know, snot because everything's coming out of you. So I do two. Then, it, you know, you don't want to forget which one was which. No, but uh, this is the one I use. I currently use right now. I was in my garage, like I said, and I was using this one for sweat. So get some cool gear, you know, whether it's a headphone or, you know, um, track jackets uh, the dry fit shirts. I mean, all that little stuff makes a big difference and it makes your, your run, you know, just, you know, awesome. And, and like I said, in the first time of the 5k, it sucked, but not only that, but you see other people and they look cool, you know, wearing all the gear. It's kind of like with everything else. Like if you play golf, you want to have, you know, the golf gear, I think it just looks cool. If you don't have the money, obviously you can do it with just a, a t-shirt or, or, you know, or, you know, whatever you have some, some, um, you know, what do they call the basketball shorts, but if you have a little bit of money to spend, it can get expensive, but just get some cool uh, running stuff. And then when you start doing these events too, you start getting some that are, you know, this one was free. Well, I paid for the run, but you know, it came with it. So that was pretty cool. So my next advice, um, I actually forgot what number I was in, but my next advice, I wanted to say that I actually signed up for a 5K when I could barely run about a mile and a half. I did it on purpose and I said it about a month in advance. The reason why I did it is because it actually motivated me. It motivated me to start wanting to do better. And I didn't want to look like a fool. So when I went out there, I actually ran the, the, the you know, the three miles of 5K. Then I signed up for another one. And I told myself, you know what? I'm going to do three of each discipline. So three 5Ks, three 10Ks until I get to the marathon. I'm not at the marathon level yet, but I've been doing that. I've been doing, you know, like I said, I did three 5Ks. Uh, then I did three 10Ks. And now I did my first half marathon. So I'm going to do two more. My, my next one is actually in February uh 2021 and that's the like i said that's the bc half series that they have here in uh, in houston and uh the first one was cypress second one is katie and the third one i believe is a uh, vintage park uh, last year i did the vintage uh, i think it was a 5k so i've been doing that and i do a month and a half in you know a park but it keeps me really kind of grounded and kind of it keeps me motivated to kind of say okay this is what i'm doing at this time and it kind of helps me improve. It, it helps me kind of just have that, you know, that carrot at the end 
to kind of get better. But that's something that, you know, again, that's some advice that I would give you. If you want to actually get better and kind of see some results, you want to start doing that where you actually set goals for yourself. Because, you know, if not, you're just kind of running, you're like, well, you know, you kind of forget what, you know, your distance and blah, blah, blah. But this time you actually have the time. And it's really cool doing these events. Uh, they're for charity. So, you know, it all goes to, you know, some charity, you know, whether St. Jude's or, or all different kinds. But on top of that, you know, again, it keeps you disciplined. And also, it's really cool running with a bunch of people. Um, You kind of meet some people out there, some friends, you know, people who you, you know, you wouldn't really kind of talk to, you know, on the other hand, because, you know, it's hard if you have friends and you say, well, that's another thing you want to you know, invite your friends to go out with you. Most people don't want to go out and, and work out with you or hang out. And it's hard to kind of fit them in a time. If you go out there, you meet these people who are already doing what you're doing. You kind of have something to talk about, have your family involved. I've seen a lot of people's families out there, you know, with signs and motivation and their kids and, you know, everybody has a different reason why they run or why they do these things. But it's a really cool thing seeing all these people that are active, that are trying to stay active and, you know, of all ages. I mean, the when I did the half marathon, I saw this guy uh, who was in a, a wood, you know, in, I don't know what they're called, you know, with his hands, he was kind of doing the half marathon himself. And, you know, it's very motivated, it's very inspiring. So you kind of feed off of each other and it's a very cool event. Plus you get some cool pictures, you kind of see yourself and, you know, it's it's really cool to kind of see some nice pictures of yourself too when you're running and you're, you're kind of in that suck, you know, which, you know. Also. My next advice is to go out there kind of preparing that you're going to be miserable, uh, whether it's, you know, heat, whether it's uh, hurt, you know, in, in your lungs or in your legs, uh, you just be prepared to be miserable and to suck. You know, a lot of people say embrace the suck, embrace it because it's going to happen. It's going to hurt. You're going to want to quit. And it's going to be horrible. But hey, that once you get past that, there's a certain feeling that people get. You know, I don't know what it is. Uh, they call it runner's high. But you just get to a certain zone where you start thinking so clearly. Uh, you start kind of inside of that pain and suffering. You kind of find something positive. Um, and it's amazing. So do it. Embrace the suck. Embrace the, you know, the, the suffering. And you'll be fine. I know a lot of people say, well, Jerry, you know, you like to run. You know, that that's why, you know, you can do it. No, I don't like running at all. It, it, it hurts. I know some people might, but I'm not one of them. But I still do. You have to do these things. You know, my philosophy in life is the things that are great for you are usually horrible, like eating cakes and, you know, hanging out and doing nothing. You know, it, it feels great. Horrible for you. Things that are amazing is, you know, that are good for you, but suck. Running, you know, eating healthy, you know, I, you know, I still eat kind of tasty, but it's still not better than donuts and, you know, and crap food. But, you know, um, embrace the suck. Okay. It's going to suck. The last advice that I want to give you is to always remember to stretch. Uh, there's some really good people out there on YouTube that, um, they give you some stretch routines. Uh, I do some basic stuff just with my hands and my arms. Uh, I do some leg movements, stuff like that. Uh, maybe I'll make another video about stretching while running or before running and after. But I do a lot of stretch like that. And I did not that for a long time and I actually injured my back. Well, I thought it was my back, actually my glutes. Um, and it sucked. I mean, I went from running, you know, I did it. I had just done a 10K and I had to rest for maybe about a month. I think it was, it was horrible and it just feels so bad. I, it, I was almost like borderline depression. Like when I went back and started running again, I just feel so free that to actually be out there and being able to run. And, you know, it's hard, you know, especially when you're pushing yourself, you start thinking, well, is this, am I being just a little punk or is this a legitimate, you know, <laughs> you know, injury? And for me, it was a bit of an injury. That's actually why I went to the doctor who gave me that advice about the shakes because I actually had a, a, a horrible, I thought it was my back, I couldn't walk. I actually couldn't drive. I had to put my foot up. After that, I started stretching and I started doing all these things. And again, there's so many YouTube channels. The Running Experience is one of them. Um, and there's a lot of people out there who obviously are already doing this. You can find this information out there, just, you know, some, some stretches. And I definitely recommend that. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching. That's my recommendation. Uh, hopefully you take a little bit of advice. And, if, you know, if you like it, go ahead and uh, hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell notification. And every time I post a video, you know, you'll get a notification. Also, guys, if you get a chance, uh, please follow me on my Instagram. I just actually opened an account. Uh, it's uh, Jerry Dean Life. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. And if you're wondering what that is behind me, that's actually an Iron Man poster that I thought was really cool. I got it framed. I'm a big Iron Man fan. And that's a, a lion right there. Uh, it's actually made out of paper. I thought it was pretty cool. Peace.